one. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We're back. My, my swivel was a little violent this evening. A violent swivel? How are you? How are you, Michael Zeno? I'm doing great, Scott Boss. I said I'm grainy. I promise everyone next week the new Logitech camera is going to be here. So you won't have to look at my fuzzy face anymore. <laughs> so many promises week after week. Week after week after week. How are you? What are you drinking tonight on our nightcap? Yeah, welcome everybody to Nightcap with the Land Geek Guys. We're on like episode 99 or something. Yes, especially been picked up by uh, Netflix. Uh, did it every Ooh, week. Amazon. I'm drinking uh, from the north woods of Wisconsin. Line and Kugels. Northwoods Lager. Is that what they drink at Deer Camp? Oh, they, yeah, we drink, well, they drink Schlitz at Beer Camp. I have a um, Mighty Mocha. Squirrel Stout, kind of a beer connoisseur since we all last met. A squirrel Stout, huh? Yeah. Boy, I wish I wasn't so fuzzy. Well, let's I wish I wasn't so fuzzy. Look at this. We already have uh, some comments coming in here. Matt Forbes, Rope and Swivel. Thanks, Matt. Rope and Swivel. Drinking high spirits and good tidings. Andy. Welcome, Andy, our faithful. Hey, Wes. Nice. 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 To see ya. Um. So what are we going to talk about today, Scott? I, you know, I don't usually we call it a um, a uh, you know surprise guest, but we put it right out there, didn't we? We really did put it out there. I think uh, you know we're searching for a few more viewers this evening, and I think he's going to reel them in. I really do. Oh, is that what it was? It was a ploy to get more people. You don't think we're good enough? <laughs> it was not a ploy to get more people. He's really going to be here, right? <laughs> what do you think, Eric? Yep. Yep, there it is. Nice. Oh, and Shannon's here too. Oh, Excellent. How are you? The Schaefer is in the house. Nice. Uh, now, Mark, this was not a ploy to get more viewers. This Mike, was uh, oh. just us telling the community that James Bond himself, Alex James Trebek, Bond himself, the Land Geek community, is going to be uh, joining us this evening. Scott Todd, we're going to be talking about some mindset things and some things about the power of information. Right. Right. So, I mean, that's a kind of a broad topic. We'll, we'll break that down in a minute, right, to really get into, you know, what we mean by that. But you said you had something you want to start with. What do you want to start with tonight? Well, first of all, I need to I need to give a shout out to Tom Stout. And I, I want you to throw that uh, quote up there. Tom Stout. All Tom, right. Stout. Oh, there. Tom Stout just started flight school this week. He is from Wisconsin. Mike, I'm pretty sure he probably goes to deer camp. He owns a bar stool store. <laughs> That's right. So swiveling is uh, is very easy on a bar stool. So awesome. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for joining. This might be your first time listening. So just so you know, we told the line, right? We'll have fun. We have content. You know, this is uh, it's 10 o'clock here on the East Coast, right? We're at 9 o'clock with you, Scott. And in the West Coast, uh, we're looking at 6 o'clock. Uh, no, 7 o'clock. I got Three kinds of mathematicians for you. Those who can add and those who can't. Comes out every time. But uh, <laughs> is Wisconsin and Canada West? Yeah, I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. KJ in the house says Matt Forbes. Awesome. So one, one more thing, and I'll get to it. My mother in law is watching. Nancy Mar, I love you. We love you. Family. All right. So tonight we're going to get started. We're going to start with a segment tonight. Okay. And so, really, you're kind of throwing it out of out of the out of the uh, normal right progression. Out of, right out of the queue. We're, we're going to do a little variation on the Facebook quote of the week. Nice. All right? But it's a little, it's a, it's deviating a little bit because uh, we are using a Facebook Mastermind member, Larry Overstreet. But I would like to, uh, in honor of Dirt Rich coming out. And Mark's book coming out. I want to read uh, Larry Overstreet's review that he put on Amazon for Dirt Rich. All right. He was the first one to review it. Nice. 
Yeah, right. So he here here he gave it five stars. Of course, he gave it five stars. And here's what Larry said. Mark shares his story of how he got into raw land investing and then devotes a chapter to each of the major steps in the process of evaluating, acquiring, marketing, and selling raw land, along with the management systems and processes needed along the way. This book lays out the case for raw land investing, how and why it works, and how it can deliver a truly staggering return on investment through passive income, seller financing, and notes. It's a quick, enjoyable read for anyone interested in learning more about raw land investing or, or otherwise interested in real estate investing, but worried about the cash required. And of course, the tenants, trash, and toilets. Highly recommended. Nice. nice so I thought that was pretty nice. You know, Larry's been a, a member of the group for a long time, probably three or four years. So I don't know. Um, but I, I thought that was a good, uh, good review that he gave Mark. Yeah. For the and rich book. And I think what's great, right, right when he opens up that book, Mark just gives you insight into how he started, right? So, you know, it's sometimes hard to look at someone who's very successful and say, well, how can I emulate that? How can I achieve that level? You know, and that's, in, I think, in all endeavors in life, right? Whether it's, uh, uh, you know, sports or whether, you know, any kind of activity, right? But uh, you see that he, you know, he started out like everybody else. He was nervous. He had some uh, concerns. He didn't have proof of concept yet. And he took risk, right? And, um I think that really helps, you know, especially when people are starting this business, because those are some common feelings people have, right? They're not sure, they're not, they don't have proof of concept, right? Which is huge. Um, and they're worried that they could uh, make a mistake, buy some land, get stuck with it, all these things. So um, it's great to read that and, and go through it, you know, what was going through his mind when he started the process. Yeah, for sure. And, and, reading about the risks he took and the experiences he had, uh, you know, it, it empowers us, I think, to take further action. And that, that's a little bit about what I wanted to kind of talk about tonight is just kind of information sharing and how prevalent that is in this community. Okay. Um, I think people are really transparent with, all of the facts and knowledge in their head and and they readily share those things with the community and it just helps propel people forward. And uh, it's, I don't know, I it kind of clicked with me last night too. I, I'll tell this story, I, I think it's kind of cool, but I, I was doing a coaching call with, uh, with some investor, some folks who had been on the investor toolkit and they've been, they've been with the toolkit for a long time and they're, they're thinking about moving forward of a flight school, they're a little bit nervous uh, and I was too, right? Like I was nervous to, to, to go forward in this, in this business. But, uh, you know, we had a great conversation for like 15, 20 minutes, just about county research and like how to get a list and, and that type of thing. And, and I, I, looking back at the conversation, I was like really transparent with this information. It was just kind of all coming out of me and they were really appreciative and, and they got to a question about flight school and then they were asking about coaching and, you know, would, would flight school be worth it? Would coaching be worth it? And, um, and I just said, and I, and I prefaced it this way. I said, I'm not trying to sound egotistical at all, but I would just ask you in the last 15 minutes, have you learned anything um, maybe above and beyond what you learned in the toolkit? And they said, definitely. Yes. And I said, well, that's kind of what flight school is. It's like, you know, flight school is, 10 times the investor toolkit. You just, you get so much information with flight school that it really helps move you forward in the business. It helps uh, really eliminate a lot of pain points. Things become much more clear. Scott Todd, who's gonna join us in a little while, he, he just hands this information to you. He's very transparent with this information. He gives you the keys to the car basically. And all you gotta do is just turn the car on and drive it. I mean, you gotta stay on the road, uh, you got to put gas in the vehicle. You got to do maintenance on the vehicle, but, uh, you take the information that Scott gives you and you run with it and it just brings you to amazing places. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's, you know, you know, there's a lot of information out there, but what happens is it's the execution, right? And, and when you talk with people who are doing this business and you get a sense for how you can execute on that information. So I think that kind of works uh, together with what you're talking about, right? The power of information, but then that's coupled with the power of execution, right? Because there's lots of information out there. Um, of course, not all the 
there's a lot of details that you have to really, you know, most like really important things, I think, conveyed via story, right? The stories of people, the way people have gone through experiences and you can listen to that. And that carries a lot of, uh, you know, truth within that, right? And it's easy to comprehend. So when you have somebody else sharing their execution, how they took this information, right? When we talk about a toolkit and it has all this information, how do they take that? And what's the real way they execute on that information, right? How do they take that to a level where it begins to be functional? And that's, that can be difficulty, right? I mean, uh, we realize that. What's up? We always say this, right? Paralysis by overanalysis. And if you don't have a guide, as Mark calls it, a Sherpa or a mentor, it's so easy to get caught and you could run down rabbit hole after rabbit hole. Or and you just, you know, it's the execution phase, which is, again, we're, you know, when we're sharing in the community, you know, and I always tell people what's great, right? Is we're a small, we are, we really are a small community of like minded individuals. We all, uh, we enjoy making money, but we're ethical, we're transparent, we're honest. Uh, we, we just, you know, we take our business serious. And as you can see, ourselves, not so much, right? But uh, <laughs> it, it's the execution on that information. So it's a double-sided coin, right? Uh, information and then the execution on that information. Yeah, and it's so rewarding uh, moving forward <clears throat> with other people uh, in the same journey, you know. Uh, as you said to me a couple weeks ago, being in this community, it kind of raises the glass ceiling on your, of your potential, of your expectations, right. um, of your income. Honestly, you know, I think I think this group it helps raise the glass ceiling in all those areas, and you learn so much, and you you form a community with people, and you just I don't know, it, it it's been, I I just think. Uh, the information sharing in this community uh, is, has been really phenomenal, and um, I wouldn't be where I am today without it. Well, yeah, and I think even the information in terms of people's difficult times, right? Some, we, you know, everybody's had times where it got a little rough. Maybe the mailing wasn't as successful as you wanted, right? Maybe your marketing is just not going the way you want, or maybe you're dealing with tire kicker after tire kicker when it comes to selling a property. But guess what? You're not the first one, right? And you're not going to be the last one. This is the something that happens when you're in the business until you get into the groove. And even when you are in the groove, you're going to have dips, right, that are going to come down. But I always like to say even we talk about a 3 to 5% acceptance rate on our mailings, right, maybe the 1% to 2% close. But that every mailing isn't going to be a knock it out of the park. There are going to be some that are just going to be flat out duds. But it's it's the all of them put together, right? The, if you take the comp, all of them put together, then they're going to average out to that three to five percent, that one to two percent close. But that's the consistency, and that's what makes the business really work. And that's where the power of our community, the power of information of like, hey, hey, Scott, I'm having this difficulty, and you're like, yeah, Mike. Well, I had that same thing, and guess what happened? And you tell me a story, and then you, and then it comes across. I'm like, oh, all right. And I, I get reinvig, you know, reinvigorated. I, I feel like, okay, I can get through this. Scott had the same problem, so that that information sharing is as just as valuable uh, as the information as to how do you scrub a list, right? How right. do you, how do you uh, choose an area, right? How do you? That's all very valuable, very important information. But uh, this other information, right, that uh, you know is truly um, just as important, right, that we convey to each other. So, Mike, let me let me ask you this: uh, What advice would you have for someone who they they've seen um, they've seen the potential in this business? They've 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 felt a, a snippet of of success, right? But then maybe they have a rough patch and things just aren't aren't going well. They're working really hard at it, but for whatever reason. Things just don't seem like they're falling into place. So right. what advice would you have for somebody like that who they can they can see that the business works, it's all around them, but they're they're kind of having a hard time moving forward. Yeah. I mean that can happen for a variety of reasons. And what's interesting is sometimes people's first deal will be a knock it out of the park, like just they hit them the market right. They bought just the everything just lines up, right? The stars line up and they knock it out of the park. And they're like, oh, man, I hardly did anything. This property sold and I made X 100% return. But then, you know, that's not always the case, right? There's sometimes properties take a little bit more work and it takes a little bit more advertising. So um, then you start feeling like, geez, why isn't this one working? And, and, the, and the true answer is that this 
and it lies in the good news and bad news about our business, which I always talk about is, is it's boring. That's the good news and that's the bad news. Well, and it's really not the bad news, but I say it that way because it's a repetitive, redundant process. This is truly Groundhog Day. So what I say to people, if they're having a dip, is remember that this is this is a repeatable, redundant process. There are certain, only two things you can control, how much you mail and how much you market. Focus on those. Like really ramp up um, you know, the, the mailing. If you need property, ramp up the marketing. All the other stuff we have to deal with, all the results of that, you know, so you need to have, you could send out, we could all send out, I just sent out 3,000 offers yesterday, right? We could all do that. But do you have the system in place to handle it? You need to build that. And I always say build that in a micro environment because you can flush out the inefficiencies on a very small scale, right? So anybody who's having a dip, just remember that this is a repeatable, redundant process. There's a certain few things you have to do, mailing and marking being like the prime bloodline of what we do. But stick with it and don't give up. I talked to a couple that they were advertising properties they had for like a few months and there was no tire kicker after tire kicker, but they kept with it. Then they sold like five or six properties in a week because they, 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 they just committed themselves to the process. This works if you stay committed. I'd say that. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. I mean, it. you have to admit, though, that it's hard. It's hard to remain consistent sometimes when you aren't, you know, when, when you don't perceive that you're succeeding. Right. So, you, you, you know what helps Scott is when you build the system, you don't have a choice. It's already happening. So that's the beauty of what we do. When you build a team and a system, you may have a day, you don't feel so good. Uh, you know, and, and you may feel like Jesus, so many things wrong. but when you have that system and that team, it's still cranking in the background. It's right. still happening. You've put people in place. You put a system in place. You've either automated it, or if you can't automate it, you've delegated it. So it's continue. Not now. Of course, you got to build it right to that point uh, through doing the process yourself. But um, that's the interesting thing, right? It'll still move along. It's like once you start this, it's like on autopilot almost. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again, just because I I know I can't I can't wait for your reaction. Well, we this. all start in the bowels of the ship. <laughs> Because you have to go there so quick, Matt. <laughs> Back to the lobby. Like, really? Did he have to go to the bottles that quick? <laughs> you, I see that you put up your, you know, the 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 quote complimenting Mike. Yes. You know, there there might be a quote further down that that's complimenting Scott, but don't don't put that one up because I'll check for that. <laughs> you just keep talking. I'll check for that one. Dude, oh, you must mean this one. Oh, that's nice, Barbara. That's nice, Barbara. Oh, another one for me, though. That was up there like one second. No one could read it. All right, let me pull it back up. <laughs> it says, I learned a bunch with Scott Bossman. That's my winning coaching call. Team Bossman. Yeah, remember a couple weeks ago, she won the free one-hour coaching call that in our drawing. Nice. So well, we, so we got one of those again soon, aren't we? Well, let's see. I think every eight episodes, so I think we're about uh, – I think we got another three or four to go. Nice. I, I wanted to make sure we didn't miss Greg's comment here. Okay. It says, uh, love that I don't have to pull the list for my mail is anymore. VAs make life so much easier. VAs do. And and here's the, uh, um, the thing about a VA, right? Sometimes you have to work really hard to train them. In fact, a lot harder than it would be for you just to simply do the process yourself, right? right? And that's the that's that's the danger point, right? You're like, wait a minute, I'm just gonna do it. Like, this is something that only takes me a few minutes. I don't, I'm having difficulty, and I'm gonna just keep doing it myself. Well, what happens is that uh, you default to doing it yourself. You got to put the time and energy because once you get a team put together, like I said, what's my new quote? Because I love quoting myself because I learned that from you, Scott. Right, right, right. <laughs> the best thing is a team sport. And oh. This, this we, have, we have a viewer that has a comment for you. Oh, next. honey, stop. You're, I'm blushing. St He's stop. blushing. <laughs> Matt Forbes, I agree. Why don't we have more free stuff? Let's okay. do this. Let's do this. So, right, Matt, we'll work on it. We'll maybe do, maybe work on a giveaway for next week or something. Do you think that we were kind of, I think we were kind of parlaying, is that the right word, parlaying? into the other part you we have a topic uh, or, or a, a generalized uh, uh you know 
kind of uh, what we're going to talk about tonight, right? And it was mindset as well, right? Yeah, a subject or a topic or a, um, you know. I feel like some distracted. Is there comments going out there that I don't see? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Jeez, boss man. I'll, I'll look at the higher tomorrow. Scott. Got me marketing. I need help. Okay, nice. Nice. Good job, baby. Well, here's the thing. You know, this business, the, you know, the, there are some things you're going to automate, delegate very quickly. Other things are going to take more time, right? The reality is that, um, you know, some things take you longer to internalize and get – because you don't want to – what's the word Mark uses? And I always have to kind of uh, uh, abdicate. Is that the word? He talks yeah. about rather, you know, so basically before you understand something, you – you send it out to somebody else. Every time I'm on the podcast, I'm Mark, I got to put on my online thesaurus. Like, what did you just say? Um, <laughs> we're getting it's coming in here. Drawing room, room. I said, I said drawing. I said it as a joke because I was kind of mocking you. Oh, and, and okay. So I now Aaron, Aaron thinks it's really how I say drawing, but it's not. I just, I was just trying to be goofy. Anyway. <laughs> Someone, oh, who won the robe? We were Tim Harris Harris won the robe, uh, Tim. It's in the mail, my friend. Jeez, abdicate. Thank you, Matt Forbes. That's the one. See, I, I can just have a live thesaurus. So every time I have a call with Mark, I'm going to have Matt in the sidelines. But, Matt, what did he just say? And he just kind of throw up. <laughs> Is, it Is it time for Matt Forbes? Uh, no, it's not time for Matt Forbes. We're four minutes shy. Jeez, you're really putting things in. All right, let's get back on track, boss man. I want to talk about mindset. Tell me about mindset because we, we were talking about how things get a little tough, right? Mark always says a business can give you sometimes that proverbial kick in the teeth, right? What are, you know, what are some ways, what are some strategies to kind of pull yourself out of that rut? Have you found anything that's worked for you? Like, you know, you're having a kind of a little bit of a rut. Uh, I feel like the business gave you a kind of a, a, a kick in the noggin. You know, what's a way that we can, uh, we can reinvigorate? Do you have any thoughts on what you might do? Anything? Well, I, I think I think uh, what you alluded to earlier, what's most important is consistency. Not giving up and continuing with your daily activities in this business, mailing and marketing, right? But but if you are in a situation where things just don't seem to be happening, uh, you just may need to adjust. You may need to swivel to something different, right? You may need to you may need to change counties. I when I first started out, I had to change counties. I, I had to change counties a few times. Or I made the mistake of going from a county where things were going well to maybe going to another county where there, as Scott Todd would say, there were crickets, right? Right. And that became very frustrating. But you know what? Looking back, it was a it was a significant learning experience for me. So you may need to readjust. You may need to look at, you know, delve a little bit deeper into county research. Are you in the right area? Uh, there's 3,000 counties out there. We can find the right one for sure. Um, analyze your pricing a little bit more, right? Look at, look at all of these things that are controllable and see if there's anything you can tweak a little bit to change, change the path. Um, and then, you know, you got to look at, uh, you got to look at your habits, your daily habits with mailing and marketing. So what's Andy say? When is a rut and when it is time? What to is rethink? a rut and when is it time to rethink? So what would you give an example of a rut in the business? So, yeah, I, Andy, what I kind of alluded to a little while ago is, you know, I was in a, I was in a county for a while when I was going through one-on-one -on -one coaching and, uh, sending out mailers. I was being really consistent. I thought it was a good area. And I did that, you know, consistently for probably six weeks. And there, there were just crickets. I wasn't getting anything. So it was a learning experience for me because I think in that county, uh, people, they just value their land a little bit more and, and they weren't going to give it to me for 25% of market value. Um, even though the county next door, I was doing fine in. Uh, so that was when it was time for me to rethink just because I was in a rut. Things were not changing. Uh, even though I was sending, even though I was being consistent with my mailers, 
uh, things were not changing on the back end of that. So right. that's when I knew I had to readjust. I either needed to change my pricing and make it a lot higher, or I needed to change counties. Very good. You know, I think another example of a rut would be, you know, we talk about automation and fully automating our business, whether through delegation, software, zaps, whatever it may be. But we really need to, you know, go through the process ourselves first. And some it takes people time to actually go through the process, you know, they have the information, the knowledge, but then to execute and put it into the system, right? So a rut could also be that uh, you're in charge, you know, right now you're in charge of all the mailing, you're in charge of all the marketing. And so that you could always, uh, you, you could just like be the one that just gets caught up in other parts of your life and you don't put the attention to it. And all of a sudden you're not, uh, you know, you're like, how come I'm not having any property? Oh, well, I'm not getting many accepted offers, but then you have to re-examine that the rut you got into is that, you stop mailing or you slow down mailing. I mean, you're going to have at least that hundred a week in a, and that's just the beginning, right? That's a micro environment. Think about that. You go through flight school. Scott Todd talks about a hundred mailings a week. That's a micro environment. That's the people who recognize that that's going to get you several properties every, you know, a month and that's going to keep, and then say, well, wait a minute. What if I do 500 mailings, right? What if I do a thousand mailings, right? but build the system to that point that you can do that. But right. So but when you're in the beginning, a rut can simply be you're in charge of everything. So, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't, you just feel like life takes over and you, and you just get distracted and you don't get out your daily mailings or you don't get your daily marketing out. So a rut could be refocusing and being reinvigorated to know that you just have to know it well enough to help teach somebody else how to do it for you and always be looking to say, what can I remove myself from today? What's the one thing, or one part of that whole process doesn't mean you have to um, remove mailing altogether from your plate, but what part of the mailing can you remove from your plate, right? That's important, you know, to slowly piece it out like that. So I think ruts come in many ways. Got a comment so, here. You want to Mike? Okay, so Matt Forbes says Scott Todd is always saying the market will talk to you if you are not getting the responses you want, then the market is telling you your prices are too low. Nice. Very Definitely. cool. Very true. Uh, so let's see. I was gonna say, what was I gonna say? I don't know, I'm feeling like you know, I uh, I, I, he, my, flight school must be running later, or, or else I feel like I'm getting you know, like you know, going a young teenager and you get stood up on a date, like, where's Scott Todd? Yeah, right? <laughs> he, he said he'd be here. Oh, no, but he's got flight school, and I know sometimes one thing about flight school is Scott's very passionate about it. If he hasn't made his point fully, he'll continue going until he does. So that happens as well. Oh yeah, that that's no worries. So I think I think I think now, Mark, Mike, it's nine thirty-one. Okay, here we go. You ready? You show it. Yeah, let's do it. Coming on up from the lobby. Yeah, maybe. Matthew Forbes is here with the segment How he created, the refill. Yep. There it is, the refill segment. Take a look at that Oban right there. The Oban is in the house. How are we doing, boys? Hey. Before we pour, Ooh. actually, go ahead and pour, and then I'm going to toast to you real quickly. Ooh, I like it. Okay. So have your bottle. You guys got to stop drinking beer on this show. Get your glass. <laughs> it's not hard. You deserve it, right? You've been working hard all week. Pour yourself a little something, and then Scotty Bosman's got a, uh, got a toast for us. How exciting. I just want to congratulate you because I saw in the Facebook group today that you just made your first purchase, correct, via Simply File? I did. I can't believe that worked as easily as you guys say it does. That's amazing. So good day simple? for me. That's awesome. Congrats to you on your first purchase. Thank you. Prost. Cheers. That's awesome. Thank you, Matt. I'll have to go do is sell it. Uh, uh, any questions for you? Uh, well, we got you up here in the lobby, and we were talking mindset, information, you know, I, I've seen you've been down there listening, throwing comments. Uh, any questions you have or anything, anything you like, you know, based upon what we touched on so far from your perspective? Because I think it's important, you know, you're, you're getting rolling through flight school and you have a unique perspective right now that I think uh, is very helpful. So anything, uh, any, any questions, comments, topics for discussion, as my teacher in high school would say? Come on. You didn't go to high school. Don't be ridiculous. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I I, as, oh, you I know. Guys are as you guys are talking about mindset, it, you know, for me, it's 
I mean, I'm in week, I'm just about in week 10 of flight school, right? So this is the big week for us. We're really excited, right? We've got Scott who's going to sort of show us his entire business, which we've been, you know, he's been teasing us with this for the last two and a half months. Nice. Um, but, you know, for me, I would not, I forget about that property. Like I'd be nowhere, right? Without going to flight school every week. You know, like I've been talking to a lot of people about the land business and the, you know, my mindset is I got to learn this thing. And I, I, you know, when I uh, got flight school, I went in and I did the whole investors toolkit um, and I went through it and it was great. Don't get me wrong. All the information is there, but the context, you know, isn't there, right? The stories, the, the one liners that you get from you guys on this show or from flight school. So to me, you know, the mindset is just, you know, watch these guys, read the comments, listen to the round tables, go in, listen to the mastermind. I mean, I spend more time with you clowns than I do with any of my friends. <laughs> I, I don't even have friends anymore. I do the same thing, Matt. Some of my best friends are my virtual friends, you know, on Boxster yeah. and, uh, yeah. So oh, thanks a lot, Mike. That's actually, yeah. well, yeah, that's what I mean. I meant you, Scott. Jeez. I, you, just, I, you just said I was virtual, though. Mom, mom and dad are fighting tonight, kids, huh? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I want to thank you once again for your toast and uh, hopefully stick around for the uh, end toast. I'll be here. All right. All right, man. I got good news, Scott Boss, man. I got someone in the lobby you've been waiting to talk to. He's late for his date, but he's finally here. I was just telling everybody. <laughs> wait, wait, where'd he go? He just disappeared. He was just oh. there. I swear he was there. He'll come back. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, no, he's he's uh, he's just. Can I, can I ask you a question quickly? Ask me a question. That'll that'll fill the time. Yeah. Here, here's here's a mindset question for you. So, uh, for some people, there is a huge barrier in stepping back from things and bringing in that team support. Mm -hmm. So, what advice would you give to someone as far as that mindset? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people, a lot of people are very hesitant to step away from certain aspects of this business, thinking that it just may not be done perfectly or it may not be done efficiently or whatnot. Yeah, the problem is this whole idea of micromanaging your business, right? The idea that, uh, you know, you are the only one that can really truly, I mean, yeah, who has the biggest vested interest in our business? We do. But the reality is we have to realize there are people out there that can do it better than us and we can empower them to do so. So I think that uh, that's probably the hugest, the biggest part I would say right there. And I'm going to bring him up before he disappears again, because it, I feel like a, a, like in school when I almost got stood up by that girl in high school, you know, here he is. I'm bringing him up. No more delays coming up from the lobby. I promised you Scott Bossman, he'd be here. It's Scott Todd. It says there I'm on the air, but I can't, I can't see, like, I can't hear you guys. Like, Something's wrong with the sound no. here. Oh no! I don't know. This Can is you weird. hear us? Can you hear us? All right, we're gonna bring it back down. Oh, Matthew. I don't whoa. know. I'm trying to figure this thing out. Let's see. All right. Well, we're gonna drop him back down to the lobby, and then I'll see if he can hear us. Oh boy, Scott, you're in the lobby right now. Oh, he's coming back. You know, as we we te we do a lot of times have technical difficulties. I don't know if it's be live. <laughs> we got to talk to be live. We got to get them. Scott Bossman, right? Uh, um, let's see, Matt. I'm gonna drop you out. Maybe I don't. You think we got too many down there? Is that what it is? Maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's gonna. He's gonna. I don't know how to X nay you, Matt. But uh, we're gonna try to get Scott Todd up here. He's gonna hopefully come back. We apologize, guys. Um, but I think it's going to work the next time. But Scott, <laughs> Boss Scott Bossman. Yes, sir. All right. We were what? talking about VAs and how sometimes we feel uh, like it's difficult to hand off something so valuable, right? Something that's so, um, you know, important to somebody else. And how do we, uh, how do we empower them? And how do we, you know, how that whole, how do you feel about that? I, I'm going to ask you the same question. So, yeah, I, I'm actually a person who has a difficult time. My wife, I'm sure, will chime in. Uh, delegating to others at times certain responsibilities that I deem important. So to get over that mindset was a huge challenge for me, 
or to get over that barrier, to cross that barrier was a huge challenge for me. Uh, so I think what I did was I just kind of had to take a step back and take a deep breath and look and see what you guys were doing, what the community was doing and, and realize that, okay, look at this guy here, look at this gal here. Uh, they have these systems in place and they're doing really well. Right. If they can do it, you can do it. So let's just test it. It doesn't mean, you know, the first VA that you hire for this particular activity, it doesn't have, it's not set in stone. You have the, you have the power to hire and fire in your business. It's your business. Right. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't have a business background. So I think that was difficult for me initially to, to realize that, uh, these barriers that are in my mind, uh, they're not permanent. They're not, nothing is set in stone. You can, you know, you gotta, you gotta push your limits in certain areas and, uh, just my wife distracted me there and just, uh, you know what? Hire fast, fire fast. That's hire fast, fire fast. Yep. Great way to look at the BAs. And you were saying, remind me of that, uh, is, is, uh, hire fast, fire fast, right? So basically, um, you know, give everyone a shot. It doesn't work. There's more VAs out there. So you can definitely continue to that cycle of uh, trying to find out. But when you find the right VA, you treat them right. Because, again, it's a team sport. And building the people into this team that are important, um, when you get someone who's, like, solid, you treat them right. You really, you know, empower them to continue to do their job well. So I think that's that – we all have that difficulty. So uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting. So listen, do we have – What's our next segment? Do we? Have, we I think we missed a segment in that whole la la la. Is Scott? Is Scott not in the lobby anymore? I think it's difficult. I, you know, he's not in the lobby. I hate to disappoint, but we're gonna have to do a. It's. Uh, let's go to the next segment. Oh. <laughs> All right. So everybody, please submit to us your shove it quote for the shove it quote of the week because we're a little bit low on the uh the negative responses on your signed purchase agreements oh i'm gonna try to bring them up again but i'm gonna try to bring them up can you hear us now man, i don't know what you're saying to me because like i don't know <laughs> oh man all I right i hear you and you guys are like frozen i don't get it you can't all hear right. me you know? This is horrible. This is this it is horrible. We Scott Todd. This is uh, um, yeah, yeah. Scott, can you hear us in the lobby? Thumbs up. I don't think you can even hear us in the lobby. All right, we're gonna bring Scott on next week. Is what we're gonna do without having to uh, uh, continue this. Go to the last segment. We'll roll it. I'll let we're him know. Gonna, we're, we're gonna we're gonna bring on somebody from Be Live. And yeah, we, that's what we should do. We should really bring on someone from Be Live so they can experience this wonderful product. This is not the last segment, Mike. Don't don't get all a fluster just because Scott can't come on. We got a few minutes left. All right, let's roll it. What do you We're got? Going on to the shove quote of the week. Shove yeah. quote of the week. All right, I do have a quote from uh, Brandy Free. Okay. She, she was kind enough to send this to us, uh, and she got a Google voice message, uh, a text message, actually, uh, responding to her purchase agreement that says, what kind of business are you running there anyway? Excuse me. With those kind of stupid offers, that makes you all, dumb, that makes you all look dumb and stupid. So there you go. <laughs> That's a good shove it. So anybody who's new to the, the show tonight might understand what – listen, we mail at a high volume, right? What we do is we get a 3 to 5% acceptance rate, but, of course, there's another percentage out there, people that just aren't happy with our offers. And so we kind of poke fun at the fact that we get these kind of ridiculous, like, uh, mailings back uh, where people say these. So that's what the shove it quote of the week is, right? Um, 3 to 5% of the people are going to like us. That leaves a lot of them that don't like us, but it's a numbers game. And as I always say, buying land is easy. It's a numbers game. Buying the right land, eh, not so much. I mean, that comes down to the first part of our equation, right? Our, uh, you know, the mailing plate, as Scott Todd would say, right? How we actually uh, analyze a market, choose where we're going to invest. That 
that's why that is like so important. It's the, it's the foundation of our business, right? Um, you know, so it's a numbers game. But this is what that whole ploy is about. I wanted to, anybody who's new tonight listening, like, what is the show of the week? It's basically that's the other percentage we don't talk about, right? Three to five percent acceptance, uh, one to two percent close. Then we get a lot of people that just uh, aren't interested, right? Right, except except for you, Mike Zeno, because you take those shove it those shove it folks and you convert them. I have, and I, you know, we, we would love to find a way to get do that live on the show. I just don't know the parameter. I'd love to do some live <laughs> calls, but the problem is, I think people will be recorded, so I don't know how we do it because I would love to work because that's a very it's true. Like learning how to deal with people when they're angry or people and converting them because there are some people that still will sell if you you handle them properly and talk to them. So that there is that, that, that part of the, uh, uh, what we're, you know, that reality as well. Awesome. Any other questions from the uh, community? Uh, let's see. We got right here. We got uh, KJ. I called the return to sender this week when I gave him the offer, he called me a, what do you call him? A rooster and lollipop. <laughs> a rooster and lollipop. And my, Matt Ford was throwing out the one dollar skittle. For those of you who don't know the one dollar skittle, <laughs> it's basically if there's a property, somebody offers uh, you offer someone, uh, you know, you want to buy their property, and their taxes are so high. Say you offer them five hundred dollars for the property, and you know the back taxes are like four hundred dollars or four hundred fifty dollars. You know, you still don't have to walk away from. It. We call it the one dollar skittle, jokingly, but not so much because this has actually happened many times, right? You can actually buy the property, uh, you know, for basically a couple of dollars and you'll assume the back taxes and you can still then turn around and sell the property. So we call that the $1 skill. And uh, when you write that $1 check to your seller, um, they, they can, uh, they can take that as a loss on their taxes, I believe. Yeah. So yes. that, that's a, uh, that's always uh, something I think about. Well, what do you, uh, uh, what do you think? I think this is a great show. I think it's a great topic. Other than the fact that we had Alex Trebek, we had we had the man, John. and we, we had him on. And I know some of the people in the audience could hear him, uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't connect so he could we could ask him a question. So it was just a little difficult. But uh, yeah, that that's really unfortunate. Uh, but we'll get it figured out. We'll get them on next week. I will have to say we were very serious tonight, you and I. Uh, I got to give us props for that. Yes. Uh, yeah. you know, we have our moments. And Aaron's we're watching. We're moving around. around. On people handling. Aaron, I think that's a great topic. Because, that's a great idea, Aaron. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's this whole idea of, uh, you know, dealing with people, negotiating on the phone, and, and uh, you know, really devaluing their property. I think that would be a great call to have, right? We could talk about how you devalue people's properties and, and how you really, you know, when they try to counter off you. So I, I think we should do a, a segment on that. Can you can you spell the word idea for me? <laughs> That's awesome. Can you, please? Uh, yeah. Scott, you're in the lobby, Scott Todd. Can you hear me with a thumbs up? Because if, I'm going to wait to see him. I'm going to try to bring him up again if he can hear me in the lobby. Scott, thumbs up if you can hear me. Scott Todd, no. Thumbs up if you can hear me in the lobby. Uh, I don't think so. Matt Forbes, can you hear me in the lobby? Matt hears me. Scott Todd, thumbs up in the lobby? Not so much. Say, talk to Scott, Bo Scott Boss, but see if he can hear you. Because sometimes you know how this works. Go yeah, Scott Todd, Scott Todd, can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me, Scott Todd. Nothing. Uh, huh? Nothing. Nothing. Let's bring Matt. And one more thing. I'm going to bring Matt Forb up. Matt, can you hear us? I'm good. Yeah, I don't know. Scott with all his technical wizardry. Yeah, so I'm going to bring Florida. Scott up. Uh, and uh, I'm going to bring Scott up. And if you can, if uh, Scott can hear you, then we'll just uh, we'll have a translator. Mm. <laughs> a translator. <laughs> First ever translation episode. Oh. <laughs> Scott Todd, we're going to try one more time. And if it works, it works. If not, I apologize. And everybody, this will be our last shot to bring up Alex Trebek. Am Scott, I on now? You're on, but can you hear us? What is technical difficulties for 400, Alex? <laughs> what is it? I can hear you. I can't hear anybody I else. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, 
<laughs> can you hear me? I and just not that. those two monkeys? I can oh, see that. there I it is. Oh, that is else. What's going on with all this? No, yeah, no, we apologize for yeah. the. Uh, we need a better system. I mean, yes, they, they, they apologize. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. The, the land geek community deserves better than this. Like, I would agree. No, they deserve what, better than what gives, lives. man. I don't know. I what don't know. Of, Mike Zano, what kind of show are you running over here? <laughs> Zano, what kind of show are you running? Oh, I can hear him. Todd wants to know. Oh, you can hear him. That's right. That's right. Oh, he can, he can hear, hear me. me. Yeah, we yeah, can, hear, can hear you. Can hear him. All we'd like, listen. Oh, man. So we have one question. Crazy. I can hear you. Matt. Is this one normal? <laughs> yeah, it's quite. We want to hear Scott Todd talk about. I don't know. Maybe I got to, I got to like. In five minutes. With uh, Mike some other way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you, what do you, what, now, so Mike Zeno, what do you want me to translate to Mr. Todd? <laughs> How can I assist? I'm at your disposal. We were talking about the fact of, um, you know, there's information out there, but then there's execution on information and just, you know, you know, just the whole idea of executing on information and how to take, you know, information and convert it into action and, you know, how people have difficulty with that and how he gets around that. Yeah, no, sure. I'm sure I can just remember everything you just said and then tell <laughs> Scott. Yeah, you bet. Information execution, Scott Todd. He wants to know how you do that. That is the goal of his question. Information to execution. Like, yes. how do you take information and just execute, right? Right. I'm yes. assuming that's where he's going. So, look, I, I would say that you just have to be willing to accept that you're going to suck, right? Like, I think that that's what it comes down to. I guess I can say that, right? Like, I yeah. think what it comes down to is that um, we all have we all have fears, and we all sit inside of our comfort zone. And when we venture outside that comfort zone, it feels weird. I mean, like, I'm sure that nobody that's listening to this. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can say this, but I'm pretty sure that nobody listening to this has can remember like when they first started walking, right? Like, it, it's it's weird. You know, look at a baby when they're trying to walk. They're all, off balance. They're, they're, but they're doing it right. They, they don't know. They don't know that they look goofy. I mean, they look kind of cute, right? Like, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, look, they're walking," and they're balancing. They're falling, but yet they're they are on a mission. They're not gonna like stop. They're gonna continue to figure out a walk. I think it's the same way when we go to ride a bike. We go to ride a bike and think about it. You're all wobbly and everything, and like you get this, the the train wheels and the train wheels are keeping you on. Then your parents take one of them off. And then they they, they, they they convince you that you have enough courage to take the other one off. And then they run down the sidewalk with you. And like I always held my kid's neck right here. And then <laughs> that's like the secret. I let them go. And they, they went. And after that, they never looked back. And so you're going to be wobbly when you when you start to get this information. It's going to feel weird. You're going to you're going to feel afraid to make a mistake. Mm. And the reality is, is that if you just go and do it and you just start the process, then all those fears will begin to go away. And, you know, then, then what will happen is like, you'll feel better after you do it, you'll feel better. And then something will happen that is like completely catches you off guard. You weren't expecting it. And then boom, all those fear levels come back up again. And then the next time you get something like that, you'll be like, I've dealt, dealt with that. Boom. I'm, I'm going to just like ninja, ninja chop it. And it's not that big of a deal. So I think that really the way that you, you connect the dots between information and execution is just the the action of doing. Nice. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's how you get out of a rut too? The other topic we had tonight, Matt, was a rut. You know, people get in a rut. They get in a little down spot and how they pull themselves out of that. Okay. So follow-up question from Senor Zeno is when people fall down and they get in a rut, how do they get themselves out? Well, I think you have to have the desire. You know, like you, this is where your why comes in. Okay. So like when, when you have a big enough why, then it doesn't really matter that you fell down because essentially, you know, you just know, like, I'm just going to get back up because I have to. It's, it's like, you know, it's like a, a movie, for example, you know, like Rocky, you know, Rocky is out. To, he's on a mission. He's got his why. He gets we know he's going to get punched in the he's going to be on the ropes. He's going to be like, get ready to go down. We're going to be like, oh, no, Rocky's going to lose. And then his why comes through and he comes out swinging. He doesn't stop. He doesn't just say, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to get out of the ring now. His why is what powers him through. And I mean, like, that's what you have to understand. It's like, what is your why? Why, why are you interested in this? And no matter what you're interested in, you, you know, the reason that you're looking at other information because or like this information or anything else, it's because 
you know things can be different. You know it can. You want it can. You want it to be different. And, you know, so you start to look for information. You start to look for things that will validate the fact that it, will, it can be different. And there's lots of people out there that are making a difference in their lives. So what it comes down to then is, is your why big enough to carry you? Because you're going to get punched. You're going to get knocked down. Mm. But then you got to be able to get back up and say, I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for my freedom. I'm doing this for me or whatever it is. Love it. And then go do it. Ask him, Matt, finally, when did he make the transition from micro, the micro investing to the macro? When he, when he, when was a switch from just being kind of a, you know, on a small level to the macro, like, you know, Scott Todd, over 30000 a month passive income. When did he make that transition? What was that moment? Uh, they would like to know, Mr. Todd, uh, <laughs> that <laughs> this, is, this is absurd. Uh, the moment when you went from micro to macro, when did that happen? Like the 30K in, in passive income, when did that happen for you and, and how did you get there? Uh, when did I get to 30K and pass? No, no, no. The, what, when he took the nope. land from the micro environment to the macro. Oh, micro environment to the macro in terms of the, the, the just the investing. So I, I'm assuming what they're saying is uh, that like when, when would I stop focusing on like the little stuff and start to focus on the bigger stuff, right? Yeah, big returns. Yeah. So yeah. What, what I would say is that, you know, like when, when your needs are met, then the little stuff doesn't matter. And as you progress closer to that goal, the, the, the little stuff doesn't matter because really what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to, you know, you're trying to get to freedom, right? Like you're trying to get to your personal freedom. Uh, a, a guy that some of you may or may not know, his name is uh, Clayton Morris. Clayton Morris was uh, mm, on Fox yeah, Friends, right? Like, you know, he's a, was a news anchor. And, you know, here's a guy that was extremely successful, like by any measure, you know, like you look at him on TV, he's, he's on TV every Saturday and Sunday on Fox and Friends. He's a TV host. He's worked his, his you know, worked hard for, for his career. And there was something missing. You know, Clayton was like, I mean, he was cheery on TV, but deep down inside, he, he felt like, you know, there's something missing. There's, I, I should be free. And so he started working in real estate, started doing real estate deals. And what he does is he does um, like turnkey. So he'll go in and he'll find a house. They'll fix it. They'll flip it. And then they'll put a tenant in there. And then they sell the house with the tenant in there, turnkey to another investor. Really cool business uh, that he's created. But he he's also a blogger. He's also, you know, a podcaster and uh, in the real estate space. And he has this thing called his freedom number. And I think that that freedom number is really just, you know, taking your expenses and, and knowing every month what you're, what you need to produce. And then anything beyond that is your freedom number. You're free once you've created that. And I think that once you can get, uh, once you can get your head above the clouds to where, you know, like you don't necessarily need, need that job or you don't necessarily need what's coming in. All of a sudden you start to look at things a lot differently. You know, like you, you literally start to look at life a, a lot differently because, it's it's the little things that stress you out and it, it's because you're trying to meet the bills. And then once you get to that point, you realize like, man, I'm taken care of now. I've set myself up. I'm good. Now you can start looking at the bigger picture of things and you can start to, I think, really enjoy uh, life. My um, I think back, you know, Mark, Mark, Mark Langeek always says like, uh, you know, like, um, you should never lead with money. You know, like relationships have a hard time with money. And, you know, I, I think back a lot of times because uh, to like this, there's one event that I can remember that I, when I look back, I wish I could go back and change this little one event. And what happened was my son must have been about seven. And, um, you know, I, I was working my corporate gig and I was doing okay, but we had just moved into a new house. We had just moved to, uh, Orlando, Florida, and we bought a house that was probably, you know, it was the most expensive house I ever bought. And it stressed me out. And I was trying to watch the money and everything. And I took my son to a basketball game, a high school basketball game. And we're there. And he says to me, he's like, Dad, I'm hungry. Can I get a drink and a snack? And just fearful of money. Like, I'm just watching the money. I'm not trying to burn the money and everything. 
And I said, no, we have food at home. And then he, he, he was upset. He's like, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Why won't you just buy me this? And I'm like, cause we have, you should have eaten at home. We can wait till you get home. And you know, it kind of like, it, it, it frustrated me and he didn't understand it. Fast forward all these years, he probably doesn't even remember that. But now I sit and I think about like that one time where, you know, the money, money of even just, you know, $5, I didn't want to spend $5. That's, that was like impeding into my son's uh, enjoyment of life or even my enjoyment because I was stressed out about this $5. And like, I think what, what reminds me of that is he'll come up to me and like, like last night, for example, he came to me and it's like, Hey dad, uh, I just got home you know, friends that didn't eat dinner. Can I order a pizza? And I'm thinking like, man, the pizza's like 20 bucks or whatever it is. I used to freak out over him spending like, you know, less than $5. And, you know, you just start to realize like, it's not that it's about wasting it, but all of a sudden your perspective changed. It doesn't really matter anymore. And I wish I could go back and change that one event where I didn't make a big deal over the $5. And I mean, like looking back, $5 wasn't that big of, of a deal what was the big deal was that I was, I was stressed out about the money and I wish I could, wasn't stressed out about the money because I created stress for my son. I created aggravation for myself. I don't, I didn't really enjoy that game. So once you get that freedom number, once you get above that, all of a sudden, like you, you literally start to look at things differently in that macro bigger view, as opposed to like, I'm, I've just got to keep my head down and do this work. That's awesome. Thank you very much. We love it. Let, let freedom ring. Tell them, Matt. Oh, they say let freedom ring. <laughs> Listen, let them know we thank him so much. He apologized for the difficulties. He has definitely made it worth the wait. Yeah, for sure. So, Scott, they love you. Uh, Mike Zano basically said that on the roundtable that your uh, what you contribute in terms of your stuff versus Mike Zano's He's um, versus his quotes. He's finally admitting that uh, that you're the man, and he's laying down homage to you. You you just can't hear it. That, that that's all. Matt, so that's really exciting for you. Yeah, yeah, you know what's sad is that I've got to go through a translator to hear that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry you couldn't hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah, yeah I bad. might have to just go watch the replay just to hear. It. Maybe do a right. clip of this yeah. thing to have it forever. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Matt, Scott, should we have Matt do the final toast because Scott will hear it? Yeah, oh. exactly. I kind of I sent Matt a little thing. I don't know. He can I'm do whatever he wants. Matt Forbes, you do whatever you want. All right, everyone, raise a glass. It's only 11 o'clock East Coast time. <laughs> raise a glass. Uh, this is from uh, Scott Bosman. Great things never come from, com from comfort zones. Keep moving forward. It's a great quote. So, awesome. Gross, cheers. Right. Cheers. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Scott. Sense. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Let freedom ring, Scott Todd. You'll see the reruns. <laughs> Zeno's just yelling, and no one knows what he's saying at this point. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Tell him thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Scott, from those guys. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome, huh? Oh, man. That freedom ring guy. Thanks, Matt Forbes. That, that was incredible translation. Oh, that's so bad. I think I drank too much of this tonight. That, that could be a problem. One. Thank you. <laughs> you Cheers. Bossman, you complete yeah. me, man. Well, oh, you complete me, dude. Oh, is this the segment? Are you guys going to do the segment? Uh, <laughs> there it is. See? That was the longest, <laughs> longest nightcap ever. Ah, come on. There's still one All person right. watching. So here, Mike, I have one for you. All right, I'm ready. If yeah. you're ever considering a live Facebook show, do not live. <laughs> this particular platform. Be live. Yes. Mm. Excellent. Very good. What is oh. be live? Hmm. Aaron Williams, you were right. That was a powerful story. And uh, yeah. hopefully Scott Todd can see the real – because you know what uh, – he was awesome. He just, you know, I think he's got some powerful stories. He's the guy that's taken it to such a high level, and you know, and he's telling us things that are really important. And I really enjoyed that. That was awesome. 
Yeah, his stories are very, his stories very, are very, my big brother in the land investing, as I call him. We started about the same time. He's my big brother in the land investing. Uh, you know, we've I, I do always look forward to seeing him at boot camps. We go to every single one because the very fact is that we're inspired by everybody there. And Scott Todd is one of the most inspiring people that we work with in this business. So it's awesome. So cheers to everybody. Thank cheers. you. So Scott Bossman, thank you. Matt Forbes, thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right. Oh, that was from Scott. <laughs> Reverse the swivel. Have a good night. It's called, it's called the D swivel. The D called the D swivel. I love it. Okay. Are we supposed to? Uh, I'm going to replay it. Where are the tunes? Here come the tunes on the outtake. Ready? Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to share my desktop. Get ready, everybody. We're going to do the outtake. Or we'll just sit here and wait. Yeah. Yeah. So Scott, where are you going to lunch tomorrow? Fine. <laughs> I'm on this whole fasting thing. I don't eat lunch. Really? Do you uh, do? I do intermittent fasting. Do you do that? No, I, do. I don't. Make it fun of me, man. I'm just, I'm just making fun of Zayn. Oh. Let us know that you're just like me. Are you? Wait, are you doing that? Yes. Zayn's doing it. Yeah, he's he's gonna I let do, me uh, I do uh, sixteen eight. So yeah, I don't I don't do breakfast. I, I'm same way. All right. On that note, I love it, Matt. Man, that's creepy. D swivel, Matt. D swivel. Boss man. See you next time. See you. This is the best tune ever. The best tune ever. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>